everybody, this one's going to be a really fun tutorial because if you didn't know, there's kind of this new little trick you can do with Photoshop. Uh, it's super amazing, kind of a game changer for the aesthetics of your email designs, but we're going to kind of run through it, do a little example. So first thing first, um, I'm going to need a sample image to work from. And what we're going to do is basically pick a really kind of like zoomed in image that's going to be difficult to put text over and like add into an email. And we're gonna use Photoshop's new feature to make it basically email ready. Like it was captured as if it was ready to be plugged into an email. So it's gonna be fun. Okay guys, let's jump right into it. Let me move my face over here. So let's find a good one to work from. So we're looking for, um, what we could imagine to be like a product feature. This one's actually a good one. So like, say you had your email here, but you want to put text over the top, but it's cut off at the top. This could actually be a good one. Let me download this one. And then let's find maybe another one as well. This could be a cute one. Oh, it's Unsplash Plus. No, if you don't know what Unsplash is, you can basically come here and get a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, free use images to use if you just need to practice and just work with some high quality images. These are good. Okay. This is a good one as well. And let's get one more that maybe is going to be a bit more complicated. Like, Hmm, let's see if this new Photoshop feature can handle this. Okay. This is kind of a complicated one. So there's, maybe I want to expand the sides of it. Oh, that one's going to be an interesting one. Okay. So just to kind of articulate what I'm talking about as well. So like, say I'm building an email here and, um, you know, let's plug it in one of our images here in Figma. So if I shrink this down, let's go in and we have our image, let's shoot it to the back. It's like, okay, I want to have, well, luckily this background's kind of white, so it blends in, but there's a bit of a line, but let's say it wasn't, we really want to get text up at the top here. This is where this is coming in and it's super, super effective. Okay. So that's the reason why we want to manipulate these images. We want to have our feature text up at the top, but our image here is not for any reason, not going to work. Right? So what you're going to do is head over into Photoshop, but we are going to use Photoshop beta. So if you have Photoshop, go ahead, look at Photoshop beta. It's in the Photoshop front screen. I don't know what you would call it, but when you go into your creative cloud where you have Photoshop and other programs, there's a Photoshop beta. And this is where this new AI feature exists. Okay. Okay. So here's our first image here. Um, we're in Photoshop and what we're going to do is expand the canvas up to the top. So we're basically saying like, Hey, there's this blank area here. I want to have in this image when I go to create my email. So over here you have the crop tool and we're just going to crop it up. So we're imagining we need about that much space with our email here. And then we're going to come over here and this is our rectangular marquee tool. It's basically a selection tool. And I'm going to draw that over this blank space here. And you'll see there's a new option for generative fill and that's their new AI feature. And let me re-agree to that. Um, in here, you can tell it what you want. And this is really cool if you wanna change a really specific thing about it, but we're just gonna do generate because we just want it to fill in the top section and just make it look seamless. Um, I'll let you know, it's not always 100% perfect, but we're gonna go ahead, run it, see what options it gives us. And it will output three options. And if it's not quite right, no worries. We can, um, okay. Maybe there was something it generated that wasn't quite uh, 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 agreeable with the AI. Okay. So the AI just finished and we have two options here. They're very similar. One has more of the shadow effect and one has the other, it didn't output for me a third one because I think the third one, for some reason, the AI grabbed something that was against its guidelines. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but, or what the heck it was planning to show me, but this is what it outputted. And this is great. So what I'm gonna do is just come over here and quick export this as a PNG. Let's head back over into our design and plop it in. So let's go over to my finder and add this image in. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. 
And let's say maybe I actually I want it to be way more kind of like brought in like that. And then let's go ahead and push this back. So we just need to change, you know, our, our font colors here so that it actually makes sense. Uh, maybe that changes to white as well. Maybe there could be some changes there, but now we have our negative space at the top and it fits in really nice. So that worked out really well. Let's go ahead and try another one. So here we had this guy here. Um, you know what? Let's have a, a little bit of fun with this one. You know what? First, let's go ahead and expand it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to expand it even wider. So instead of just expanding the top, I want to expand the lake area. I want to add more negative space and let's add in a bit more of that mountain. So now my guy is like super centered now in my design. So let's zoom that out. And then with our marquee tool, I'm going to come here. Um, I'm going to kind of grab over the area, hold down shift, and then just grab these extra areas here. And let's do generative fill and see, see how it works. Okay, here we are. This is looking amazing. I see a little bit of some funkiness here, but that mountain expansion looks pretty darn good. Let's see if there's another one, how, how different it looks. Oh, wow, that looks completely different. Now I'm trying to remember if there was a rock there or not to begin with. Um, ooh, okay, this one's interesting too. So, you know, it's not 100%. I can see a little bit. I mean, if we kind of zoom in here, let's really analyze it. There's just a few spots that are kind of uh, questionable, but I think if you put it into an email, I mean, like, psh, who's going to notice some of these like little funky discs like these? This looks great. Let's actually look at another one, too. So that one, that one looks a little plugged into me. Uh, and this one has a little bit of warping issues, but this one, I think, looks pretty darn good. So we have our guy now centered in the middle, and then we have our expanded area at the top. Looks really awesome. So let's open up our last one that's going to be a bit more complicated as well. So same thing. I want to add more negative space at the top, but I want to expand out the side sections. Um, okay, this is going to be very interesting. This one's complicated, so we'll see if the AI can handle... Um, really building out the rest of these vending machines. All right. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. So I see a little bit of a uh, distortion happening here. Um, quite a bit of distortion. <laughs> so some of these, um, are just not quite it, but you know what you could do, uh, in some way. I'm just looking at the different variations here. This one's very interesting. It added a whole shelf at the top. Um, and this added another, you know what? I'm going to tell it to generate again. Let's see if we can get this one. Actually, I mean, this one here looks pretty good. Um, there's just like a few funky spots. Actually, yeah, this one looks pretty darn good. I just don't like the top section all that much. Um, so let's see what this, one. this one's not bad. There's some shadowing that's happening, but I mean, Pulling in the items looks pretty good. Uh, this one's interesting. So it kind of built a new section here. And then this one built a uh, brick top at the at the, the top of this here. Um, ah, ah, very interesting. Okay. So, I mean, there's some options to go from here. Not too bad. Um, but I want to show you guys another feature that's super cool too. So say, for example, and this happens all the time. Um, you know, I'm working on, you know, an email, which that first one we were looking at was actually kind of perfect for this. Um, this is one I was messing with quite a bit. So let's say you have this image here. And I know with this client in particular, this is technically a lime based cocktail that we were trying to feature. So having like lemons and things didn't really make any sense. So what you can do is actually come over to the lasso tool and then lasso this. And then come here and let's say we want, uh, we want limes. Whoops. We want limes and not lemons. Um, and we can tell it to replace this and it will generate for you some limes for your cocktail. So it really matches the branding maybe you were going for. And that's pretty great. Um, pretty fantastic. So if you're really looking to kind of manipulate your emails, 
or your graphics and your assets for your emails to fit a theme. I mean, this is huge. This looks amazing. I might clean up maybe a few pieces here, but overall, I mean, that's pretty darn good. Pretty darn good indeed, okay? So I hope that was helpful using that new Photoshop generative fill to help expand your emails or even make some adjustments with that AI technology. Uh, let me know what you think. Are you using this feature? Will you use this feature? It's pretty darn awesome and it makes uh, a lot of the editing tasks I used to have to do I mean, done in just a few seconds, which is amazing. I also want to point out we have a new Facebook community group all about email marketing. And we actually just did a training on this last week, the week that I'm filming this last week, um, where uh, we ran through this tool together and we're like testing things. And that's where we had a few like crazy uh, face swap situations happening. Those were insane. Um, so if you're interested, Check out in the, uh, the description below, there will be a link to join the Facebook community. No pressure, it's literally just a group of designers, e-com owners, email marketers, just talking everything email. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, but I will see y'all in the-